Hey YouTube, Riggs here. Well in this video we're going to continue on this drawing here, the project that I started some time ago. It's of this image right here and I believe this makes it uh, part four that we're going to go into right now. So without further ado, I'm just going to go straight into the tutorial. Okay, now what I'm going to start doing at this point is I'm going to start working on the... I'm going to take these wacky glasses off. I'm going to start working on the hair. Here on the... it would be the right side of the face, but of course to me it's on the left side. And the reason why I want to start working on this part of the hair rather than on the other side of the face is because I've already laid down some skin tone here, but I have nothing to reference it to to give me an idea of just how dark or how light this skin tone needs to be. And in order to do that, I need to get the darker uh, hair area right here in, and then that way I can see whether I need to darken or lighten this side of the face. And then I'll have this side of the face to give me a reference for the rest of the face as that's going to be the shadow side and I guess that's let's see that's that side of his face yeah so anyway that's what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the curls and and the hair itself so putting my spectacles back on so I can see now you can see I have some grid lines all in here and the thing is is that I don't really think I need to erase these uh, because of the fact that most of it will be covered. Now, if you take a look at the hair tone here, you can see that it's very dark here, but then it goes to a medium tone here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down graphite as a base tone for the hair here because it really doesn't need to get that dark. And to do that, what I've decided to do is to use some graphite powder that I happen to have. Now I have two kinds of graphite powder. Um, I have this one here, it's a Krita color graphite and I have generals. Um, to me either one is fine so I'm just going to go ahead and use this generals. That's not saying that I feel that it's better than the other one. It's just I have to pick one. I'm just going to pick the generals. And I'm going to move that out of the way so I can get to uh, the hair itself. Now what I'm going to be careful about is going too far outside the hair here because that is the area where you have the flyaways and the curls and I want to make sure that I get that down with pencil. So just getting inside the graphite like this and then tapping the excess off. I don't want to get too messy here. I'm going to just start laying down this base tone. And you want to make sure that you are not using a heavy hand. But just be nice and gentle with it. And you don't have to make it all even because the unevenness will actually add to the various textures that uh, are in this uh, hair here. Let's see if you can get that in there so you can see that. So you have all these different tones here. And so I want to make sure that I you know, contribute to that by way of just adding this graphite base tone but not being too particular about um, whether it's blended evenly or not. So it's going to have some it's going to have some darker areas and lighter areas as I go about and I'm I'm applying it pretty much in a circular tone uh, a circular pattern not tone but pattern. Now when you hear that tapping this sound, that's me tapping my Q-tip on this jar here. And as you can see, I'm pretty sure you can see that the grid lines are starting to blend into this 
shading that I'm doing here. That's why I did not feel that I need to erase it. Another thing to be very, very careful about, and that is do not press the graphite into the paper, but rather just lightly apply it. You do not need to press it into the paper, and if you do, you remove some of your control that you're going to have, and that is the ability to pull highlights out. Now, while you're doing this, of course, uh, do pay attention to your reference photo because you want to see where the uh, dark area is and the light areas are and so forth. And right now, I just want to concentrate on the mid-tone area, but right here is where it starts to get dark, right here and out, but it's lighter up on the top here. So <clears throat> this is where I'm going to be going from. And another thing, too, is as I'm tapping this off, do be careful you do not sprinkle this graphite on the face itself. You'll have a real fun time trying to get all that stuff off. You'll just make things worse for you. And yes, the temple area here, I am deliberately uh, brushing this on in the direction that I see the hair flowing here. And just I'm just doing that deliberately. Uh, you can get away with not having to do that. Um, it's just something that I want to do. And I know that there's a little overlap into the face here that I'm going to take off in a moment. Well, not in a moment, probably in a different video. But... Um, that's where the hair just starts off real thin here and then goes uh, deeper. So I do want to get the part that goes onto the face. You have, of course, all this here. This is a light area here, so I know I'm going to be lifting a lot of highlights off of this here. So, you know, definitely do not press the graphite into the paper, whatever you do. Just be real gentle with that. See, I notice, for example, the hair comes out like this and curves around like this. So, you know, you have that option that if you want to contribute to the direction of the hair, you can see that it kind of looks like it's forming hairs in a, in a way here. I don't know if you can see that, but um, just because I'm going in the direction of the hair itself, Again, this is the base, so it is optional. I just happen to do it a lot in many of my drawings or tutorials. You've seen me talk about that, that I'll just go in the direction. Now, here's a real dark area I can see in the reference photo. So I'll just kind of be real liberal with the charcoal in this area. That just means less work for me later on. almost draw the hair just with this q-tip alone see this whole area here from the ear is all dark And it lightens up as it goes away from the ear. Okay, this is the area 
of the hair that's got a lot of highlights. I'm going to be very, very careful not to add too much graphite in this area because it means that I'm going to be able to pull out the highlights a lot quicker and easier than if I was to go too heavy on the graphite. So I'm reserving the heaviness to the dark areas. And when I say heavy, that's the darkness, not pressing at all. Do not put pressure or dig the graphite into the paper, as you will not be a happy camper if you do that. See, I'm going to start from the dark area, and then I'm just going to kind of stroke out in the direction that I see the curls going. And I could see it shaping up on the paper. It's just going to make it a lot less work for me later on when I start to actually bring out the um, direction of the hair using my eraser and, and get the shadows in with my charcoal pencil or my very dark graphite which I can definitely get away with in this drawing. Now here I can see that this is the dark area and there's a lot of curls going in this direction here. I'm just going to go like this and this is going to help me considering the fact that my grid lines are going to disappear that this will help me keep my locations I'll have references as to where everything is where this curl is and that curl is and yes I am interested in the actual hair direction because even though I cannot draw every hair exactly as on the original because that's just crazy. Nobody's actually going to care. Um, <clears throat> I do want it to have a, an appearance just from just looking at it casually it will it will appear as yeah you know you you drew it pretty much like what you saw on the um, reference. Okay so see more curling here. I'm going to keep doing this and making sure I get the direction. This is going to be a lot of fun in getting this hair drawn in. And I don't mean that sarcastically. I really do. This is really going to be enjoyable. I enjoy this process. Okay, we have some more light, so I'm just going to go real light to the edges because that's going out into the light. where everything is here. Okay. Okay, I notice this kind of curls down like this, like this, but it's mostly light hair, so I don't want to be drawing it in with the dark. So I'm going to have to take it out with the eraser shortly here. Okay, now we have lots of we have lots of um, curling going on here. This this hair is is very very um, intricate, uh, very detailed. It's almost like drawing fur, you know, than that you have so much detail that you have to work with. So many changes of tone, but that is just going to make it look really cool. And let's face it, uh, this image here, this person has really good hair. Okay, now the dark areas are really right here. I want to get that in nice and dark so I can see that goes down to there. Don't want to go any lower than that. Okay. Now I'm just pretty much just touch downing with this uh, Q-tip, no big deal.
we have dark area here you get that down in there some more dark Okay, and this area is lighter. I'm just going to really lighten my hand here, ease off a little bit, just just to leave enough to work with. So it has to be dark here. Now this all could be done with charcoal because it's so dark right here that there's no way that I'm going to get dark enough with this graphite and I may just switch to charcoal just for this part here we'll see in a second or not okay and again we have, we have curls going in this direction here So we're really moving into a dark area here, especially in this area here is going to be darker. So I'm not going to spend too much time with this graphite because I'm going to have to go a little darker in this area around here. And you definitely don't want to press too hard because gra uh, charcoal will not sit on graphite that's been flattened and turned into a shiny mess. So you, you want to be careful with that. So I'm just going to keep working on this area here, finish this up. That loops around like so. This part goes like that. Not that you're really going to see that much of that. This part went up like this. Right, and right here goes like that. So, there we go. So, we have the base layer down, and you can see the complexity of tones that I have here just using graphite and using uh, this q tip. And by itself, it gives it a much softer look, but I'm going to be going for a lot more defined look here. So, that is just my base layer right there. And this part here, I'm going to go heavier on charcoal because it is a very dark area coming from here down over to here. So, put this aside. And now, what I want to do is there's a couple of tools that I'm going to have here at my disposal. And one of them happens to be the Mono Zero. Okay, so I want my stick eraser here because that's going to help me to get in here and start getting these highlights where I see the, the direction of the hair. And this is actually what's going to give it that appearance that we have uh, hair. And I'm going to do this after I've laid down some more um, graphite with a pencil. But I'm just going to show you a little bit here.
Another thing too, which will probably come in handy, is using that trick with the um, frisket film that I've demonstrated in some of my videos. And I keep, I keep that right here, see the little frisket, and I'll use that to, with a toothpick or, or, or whatever you call that little metal tool. Um, I forgot what that thing was called, but uh, then that too will will come in handy. Actually, there's another area here that's it's going to be uh, highlighted, and I can tell that it's the area here is already too light, so that's not going to do me any good. So I'm I'm spinning my wheels at the moment, but I'm just kind of putting some marks in here where I see uh, the different locks and directions that it's going, because that's actually going to provide me with a road map as to where everything is. So, see this goes more down to here. I'm going to get in there with a darker pencil in a moment, but let me just get some of these in here because these are going to be like little areas that is going to tell me where each of these things are located at. So right here, it's another curls. So there'll be highlights here. And also it'll help me to not get into these particular areas uh, with too dark of a pencil so that I won't be able to pull out the highlights when I need to. And you just take your time. There's there's no hurry. And don't try to be too perfect cuz then you really will destroy the illusion of reality here. Because nothing is perfect in hair. Hair goes all over the place. Hair goes where it wants to go. area here and this part here curls up so let me get some of those going take this uh, sandpaper block here and remove the top sheet I don't really need that but I'll save it for later so I'm going to put a point a little more of a point on my Tombow here that'll let me get finer lines on here in all this area here there we go see that that just looks so much better too and I just want to get some of these in here most of it's going to get colored in anyway or shaded in blended in however you want to say it but I just want to make sure that I have all my directions here I don't want to lose where I am in the in the drawing itself where everything actually emanates from so But yeah, I'm definitely going to go darker in many of these areas here. Just want to get some of these areas here. It just kind of allows me to use them as landmarks or whatever, reference areas. Because when I start to lose the um, grid, then, you know, where everything is in relation to the eyes and so forth, 
it's easy to lose your place and you're putting curls where you know really there is no curl or whatever and I don't want anything that's going to distract a person's attention away from from the main drawing itself okay So I'm just going to put a few in here, like so. Well, I like what I see so far. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of my darkest um, graphite pencils. And that will probably be, well, I can use this 10B. I do have a 12 somewhere, but I'm going to use this 10. It's dark enough. Get to the point where it's, it's really not going to be that much darker. And I'm going to start shading in here in areas that I see as shadowy start getting the darks in here and then blend them in see if I can achieve the same tone that I see on the reference here don't have to be perfect we're all going to be blending out and taking things out with the eraser. I do need to get these dark areas in here. Now I'm going in one direction or the other and I'm lifting my pencil at the end so it feathers into where the highlights are going to go. For example here, if I take a clean Q-tip for example and start to blend what I've done, you'll see that in the in between there, there's more highlight than on the ends here. And that's what I want to achieve. And I'm just going to patiently do that throughout this whole thing. And then, of course, you're going to, you want to take out your highlights if you co cover them. You know, as you, can, you can do it as you go. This area here, I know I'm going to have to go a lot darker than I'm probably going to be able to do with this pencil. So I am kind of hesitating whether I should go with that or a charcoal. I'm going to try a little charcoal here just to see what I'm dealing with here. 
and just a very light, very light touch and to make sure that I can blend it. Okay, see this part here is a this is a curl. I don't want to I want to get in here to accentuate it from into the darkness there and then it kind of comes out into the light so I'm just going to test a little part of this so that it, I can do damage control if it's if it's a bad decision on my part I'm hoping it's not Okay, now I'm going to go take my paper blender. Where is that little puppy at? There it is. Okay, and that way I can get a little more control here and I'm going to blend it out. Okay, gotta make sure I don't have this line look here because that's just not going to fly. Okay, so we got it goes out like this, curls up, and lights up here. Make sure I can blend off that dark area there. It lightens up here. You want to keep looking at your reference. Don't lose, don't lose track where everything is. And I'm not putting hardly any pressure on this at all because I will not be able to take off anything if I really press hard on this. So I'm pretty much sliding my paper blender over this and letting it just move stuff around. Let's see if I can get more blend out of that here. darker there but we'll just do this for now all right find my eraser again and we got some real bright highlight here I can see it's got to go into a darker area and I don't have enough darkness over here to do that. So I'm just going to tease it a little bit. So I need all this darkened up here. I think I'm going to go with this charcoal here for that. So.
I got the wrong pencil. No wonder I'm freaking out. All right, let me get this Primo Elite here and use that. There we go. I was wondering what was going on here. It just didn't sound right. Didn't feel right. Didn't look right. here at this area here we're getting into the dark zone here so I definitely want to get this dark in here should all be dark in here well this is a lot to get dark so I may go with the powder here in a moment. Let me just kind of get some of this shadow thing going here. And I can blend that in. here this is all going to be pitch dark here goes right into the darkness Okay, so I'm now going to go into the charcoal area of this hair. So I'm going to stop at this point right there. I'm going to use my Q-tip here. Oh, I love that. That looks really cool. fight in that area there my time comes now this seems to be where the hair goes off in all kinds of directions from you might say it's like the center of the universe in this head of hair here so why not why not go with it? Oh my. 
hands are getting a little bit tired here. All right. Got some area here. I want to get darkened in a little bit. All right. Oh, let's see. I got my charcoal here. Let's see if I can lay down some charcoal here without too much trouble. I mean graphite. Lay down graphite. It's my dark 10, 10 B. This gives it more of a mid-tone to dark look. All right, let's see what I have here. This dark here and then Okay, I think I got enough here to go on to the next step so that I can at least get that on the video before I continue on this journey here. That's all the next thing I'm going to do with this. So before I end this video, you'll have a good idea how it's supposed to come out when it's all said and done. I'll tell you the, the hardest thing about drawing to an audience is is initially you, you may not actually see what's how it's going to turn out, and it looks like a big mess. But then you work it for a while, and if you stick around long enough, then you see the magic happen. Okay. Now I'm going to, in a moment here, start pulling out some highlights with my frisket so you can get a good idea of how things are going to start turning out. Just doing a few little touch-ups here. I really like how this is turning out. Hair like this can be a challenge and you might look at it and you might go, oh, no way am I going to attempt that. But trust me, when you just start, when you just start getting in there and just getting the tones going, you'd be amazed at how things just start to come out. Now, what I need to do is I'm gonna get a little tool here the finest one I have is right there and you can see that right there on the camera and I'm going to use this frisket tape now watch what I'm going to do here I'm going to pick an area like for example you see where the highlights are right there so I'm going to come in here like so and I'm going to start pulling those out And just lifting up as I go into the dark area. And look at your reference 
and try to mimic that as best you can. And of course, you can always come in and do some touch-ups. But there, I'm going to see. There's a little bit right there, and I can tell where I need to come in and be a little more lighter or darker or whatever the case may be. Okay. So I can come in there, let's say with that graphite for example, and I can start touching up areas here where you need shadow. So come in here and just real carefully now, the gentle hand. I'm going to take my paper blender and that's going to allow me to soften some of this. So it's starting to take on the look I want. And I notice a few things that I want to do. For example, I I want to change the direction of some of these highlights to go in this direction here. Okay. And then this one comes down like so. All right. And we'll try to get close. And here's the thing. I can come in here. Make any corrections I want. There's a lock of hair right there, so I'm going to get that in there. I'm going to take those highlights out in a second. Here I want to make sure that I have this. Alright. Take my Q-tip. Coax it down a little bit. All right. Okay, that's going to be good for now. carried away okay and I'm gonna go in there in a little bit and just kind of coach that down I'm actually there's a detail here that I really want to mimic and so I can get that part. Okay, that's close. It's, it's not perfect, but it's close. All right, well, I'll just stick with that for now. Okay, and I'll use my, my Tombow here for the fine marks, and I'll blend those down.
So it looks like it's coming out of the dark and into the light. Here we go. And then that's all going to get darkened up here pretty quick, so I'm not going to worry about that. Now over here, I can see we have highlights here. I want to make sure I get some of those. I'm going to go a little bit more further in with the highlights than I did with the last one here, but then I'm going to blend it out so it has a good fade. Okay. So go like this, and then it fades into the dark. So what I can do is I can take that paper blender wherever I put it here it is okay and then just kind of blend into it from the dark area and then it will look more like it's coming out of the dark into the light and there you go just like that okay and so that's how you're going to go about doing this. And you're going to have to meticulously do this for the whole head of hair. Okay. This side will be the easy part because it's all dark. But here's where all your details are. And you're going to definitely want to get as much of those details in there as possible. here yeah. have some more Okay, and then I happen to notice, for example, and I'm going to get my graphite here, that I have this, this is where one uh, hair lock goes this way and this one goes in that direction, so I want to make sure that I mark that off. So just along the lock itself, I'm going to add graphite. And then they will get blended out. That way, you see direction just like that. See, now you can see there's a lock going this way. And then when you come in here 
to do more highlights you can you can start getting the highlights going in the opposite direction and you don't get the two messed up okay that one's going to go in deeper yep Okay, then some minor ones this way. I'll use a regular eraser for that. Okay. All right. I got right here. Yep. It comes out of that other lock of hair. That one goes like this. Look at that. That's so cool. Okay, and then I can see that I'll go darker leading up. Look at that. That's just totally awesome. Awesome. It's really awesome. And I'm going to do a little charcoal action here because I just want some real pitch dark contrast here. Let me take a look. Okay. And you can see that right there. All right. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this part four. It's getting kind of long, and I will continue with the hair in part five. But uh, there you go. Um, you can see the steps that are needed to uh, to do this. All right. Well, I hope you like this tutorial, part four. Uh, stay tuned for part five. If uh, you're watching this uh, much at, later after I had already uploaded it, then part five is already available. Otherwise, uh, it will be out not long from now. And please give me a thumbs up if you like this tutorial. And subscribe if you haven't done so already so that you will be informed of my upcoming videos, especially if you click that notification bell. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.